What I'd like to talk a little bit uh, today about is uh, manufacturing. And, uh, you know, when you, you think about it, when, when you hear manufacturing uh, spoken about in the community, uh, sometimes people associate a, a mental picture of what they think manufacturing looks like or what they think that that whole word manufacturing looks like. And I want to show you a couple of pictures here. Is this what people think manufacturing looks like? How about this one? Sometimes manufacturing is often thought of as being dark and dingy and hot. You know, while people are doing mindless work that could have inspired a Geico ad. <laughs> the truth is that these pictures are nowhere near the true face of modern manufacturing. Condex, like uh, many of today's manufacturers, many of you in the room here, are producing you know, our products in environments where safety, comfort, and mainly technology play a large role in productivity and profits. Technology, innovation are vital to manufacturing. They drive a continual pursuit of increasing efficiency and improving existing or creating new products. Uh, companies that adapt well to change tend to thrive. We see a lot of this today in our manufacturing environments, don't we? A lot of computers, a lot of uh, uh, technology that you didn't see five years ago. But the stereotypical sweatshop lives on in our minds. Pictures of unsafe working conditions, aching backs, and repetitive work drive our future workforce to investigate careers in other directions. Despite the majority of Americans feeling manufacturing is important, only 35 percent, think about that, only 35 percent encourage their children to pursue manufacturing careers today. That's a pretty low percentage. However, a large opportunity exists in manufacturing. Reports indicate that over 50% of those currently employed in manufacturing and other technical trades will re retire in the next 10 years. This is causing many manufacturing execs to expect a significant shortage of workers in skilled and technical positions over the next few years. This is not only in our area, in southern Wisconsin, but it's anywhere you look in, in North America, this is an issue. This the retirement of the baby boomers are coming. And we don't have a corresponding funnel to feed those retirements in our, in our industry. Meanwhile, rising tuition costs are creating a heavy burden for those seeking white collar positions. And you can see in this chart, look at what's happened to tuition. And all of our students here that are here today, you know what's happening with tuition in your, your schools. So, you know, this is not a pretty picture for the future of manufacturing, and it has spurred, spurred myself and Condex to really invest in developing our future workforce. And this is something we've worked at here, I would say in the last five, six years in, in our area. Condex, like most manufacturers, offer internships, scholarships, and all sorts of uh, financial incentives to young people today to work in our, our facility. Another key to partnering with technical schools is working with the school staff and management to develop and improve its manufacturing curriculum. And if you're not doing this today in your area, I would really suggest you contact your technical schools and get involved with them. But we need to broaden our focus beyond, or rather before, technical schools. If you think back to when you were in high school, for some that's going back a bit further than others, including myself, uh, Shop class was often the first interaction you had with any type of manufacturing. For many technical schools, uh, you know, the constraints of limited resources and outdated hand-down tools is an issue. We saw this in our, in our local high school. We, when we were in there the first time, the welders were from the 19, early 1980s. We wouldn't even run those welders in our facility today, and I, I saw them in the high school. It's like, we can't do this. This is... It's not even safe for the students. So we've taken an approach of transforming our tech ed departments from looking like a bomb that went off to being the bomb. And this has really helped us in our area 
we, it was amazing how many people came into Lamira High School after we worked with the tech ed teacher and refurbished it and put in brand new Miller welders, brand new workstations, brand new uh, ventilating equipment. Um, it really changed the focus of that tech, tech ed department in our local school. In the last several years, we have heavily invested in tech ed departments at all of our local schools, in addition to offering manufacturing insight to the educational advisory boards. And I think this is also important. It's important in your area, as well as in mine, to start working on what these jobs look like in the future. And I think you need to start with the advisory boards. These and, and other school efforts have helped increase and maintain high levels of enrollment in tech ed courses. This chart that you see here, in particular, shows enrollment in all technical education courses of our local high school rising 40% since 2010. I was up there one day, and John Marks, the tech ed teacher, with freshmen. He had over 20 freshmen in a welding class, and they were doing a lot of really, um, I would say, really good welding that they didn't have a couple of years ago. These kids were really becoming good welders as freshmen. It, was, it, was, it made me proud to see, see that happening. But focusing solely on the high school level is also limiting potential. With many middle schools offering tech ed courses as an elective or standard course, the impression made during these early years may be what causes a student to further their technical skills in high school and beyond. And some of these slides I'm showing you are, are these are eighth graders at Condex. We brought in all the eighth graders last year and spent a day with them in groups of 25. So it was a day at Condex. And if you, if you don't know this, uh, in the past, when, when we were small, we talked to like our neighbors or our dad or our grandfather or mother, but somebody was kind of our mentor and helped us with our career choices. A lot of students today don't have that opportunity. And so we need to work with them when they're at this middle school age. That's when they're starting to think about careers. The rural community surrounding Condex alone has over 650 middle school students enrolled in tech ed or STEM courses. If small town Lamira's community has that much manufacturing potential, imagine the influence that could be made in bigger cities throughout the U.S. Condex has also helped encourage female students to pursue an interest in manufacturing. In most engineering fields, women account for one quarter or less of the positions held in the U.S. As engineering goes hand in hand with manufacturing, this too is a large gap to overcome. During our partnership with Kewaskum High School, they started a program called Women in Engineering, and this program saw a 45% increase in uh, women students enrolled from one year to the next. And the way uh, Patrick Merchant runs that program, uh, the first year uh, we had a little bit of issue in the state because they felt we were discriminatory because we had a Women in Engineering program and we didn't have a Men in Engineering program, but we did. And so we, we reported that back that we had both, we just had separate classes. And so uh, we've seen real growth in that, in that potential there at Kewaskum. This thank you plaque is an example of one of the many signs that the women in engineering students both designed and constructed and serves as a reminder to seek additional means for growing female interest in manufacturing. The question now becomes, how can each of us collectively overcome these manufacturing hurdles to ensure manufacturing thrives in the U.S. If you are a manufacturer, my recommendation is get involved. Invite students into your facility. Give our future workforce a look at what manufacturing actually looks like, its environment, its technology, and the teamwork that's involved today in making a product. This is a lot different than your grandfather's manufacturing or your father's manufacturing. Manufacturing today is pretty high tech. Um, and these are some of the pictures you'll see of our facility. Lots of computers, lots of CNC's, lots of people working as teams. Um, we need to show our future workforce that manufacturing has changed and it is now a clean and comfortable place to work. This whole facility is air conditioned. That's a lot different than, you know, manufacturing, like I said, of your father or grandfather. I would also encourage people to work with educators. It's amazing how little the educators know today of what's going on in manufacturing or engineering. And so you need to bring them into your facilities. Encourage manufacturing curriculum, career discussions, or presentation opportunities. Look for ways you can improve your local tech ed departments. And this was a case where we worked with Project Grow with the Oakfield High School 
they built the grill, which is in our area. I don't know if you understand how Project Grill works, but all these high school students build these grills, and then we judge them. And at the end, uh, the grill is for the community to use. And Oakville came to us and said, would you like to buy the grill? I said, no, we won't buy it, but we'll give you $1,500 to buy another piece of equipment in your tech ed department. And that's, that's the tech ed teacher just thanking me for you know, working with them. So we need to work with these tech ed teachers. They have limited budgets. Um, and sometimes at the school board level, the school board doesn't support the tech ed departments, and you know that. Uh, and it's getting harder today to find a good ed, tech ed teacher. So, so that's another area that we need to work in. Um, also, talk to your legislators about policies that will strengthen manufacturing. I think this is really important today. To our students in the audience, uh, all of you that are here today from uh, any of the universities, first of all, could all of you stand? Who's here from a university today? We're our students. Stand up. Let's give these students a big round of applause. Uh, I, I just wanted to say the students represent the future of our industry, don't they? And, and we need to continue to work with students, bring you in, help you with your careers. Consider the difference you can make for manufacturing in either an engineering or manufacturing support role and be selective in who you're considering as your future employer. employer. So now, for you students, I, I want to give you some advice. First, when you are, after you finish your, your college career, you're going to be looking for a career choice, right? So the first thing I would say is look for a company that is working to advance manufacturing and supports a healthy environment inside and out. You know, so look for companies that have some technology in them. You see some of this here. But I would also say, second, think about an employer that recognizes and is in sync with your values. It's really important that you match your personal values with an employer that has got the same values. And um, in your education and life, you've downloaded a lot of information that has made you who you are. And at the core of those lessons are your individual values and beliefs. A company in tune with your values will go a long way for your career. And it says a lot about the company you may add to your social media. And for those of you that have been in your career for a while, you know that if the company that you work for has the same values as you do, that always makes a better career, doesn't it? And so for the young people today, here are some things to look at when you start looking at companies. In our 40 years of business, Condex has established key values that set the framework of how we operate. Our key values are honesty and integrity between one another in all of our actions. Trust. Trust in our actions in one another and with customers and suppliers. Humility. In realizing that we succeed as team Condex. Ethics, in working together in a manner consistent with our values and beliefs. Safety and wellness, in providing an environment that promotes safety and wellness. I always tell our people, I want you to go home the same way you came. Um, I encourage you to define your core values. You know, sit down in a quiet area and write down what's important to you as a young student. And then try to match those career values against what the companies you're looking at. If they don't match, I, I would suggest you not work there. Because it's going to be an issue as you, as you go through your career. If you're a parent or educator in the room, keep an open mind. Many students will pursue college degrees and be very influential in a variety of career roles. But not all students need to gain a four-year degree to be successful. And this is the message I've been talking to a lot of parents in our area. You don't need a four-year degree always to be successful in a career. Um, there are many kids that are really good with their hands. There are lots of careers out there for that. If you have a child, a niece, a nephew, a student, a neighbor who is mechanically inclined or unsure of the direction they want to take in life, encourage them to take a look at manufacturing and other skilled trades where they can make an immediate impact right after high school. And the reason why I encourage that is many times companies have tuition reimbursement programs, right? So a student can come right into your business right after high school, figure out what they're good at, and then you can help them with their, their uh, career choices. Manufacturing offers many challenging, good-paying careers. As with any stereotypes, we as influencers need to be careful 
of the messages we give our future generations. So, today I would just like to wrap up with, if there's one thing you can take away from this presentation today, let it be to manufacture positive change. Take the first steps toward making the impossible possible. Change perceptions. Create new possibilities and challenge the status quo. Together we can dispel manufacturing myths and engineering myths and further develop its future. So thank you very much for listening to me today. Please take this message back. You know, workforce development is a local issue. You can hear about the national government trying to develop workforce development. It really belongs at the school board level. It's a local issue. I'd encourage you all to take this back. Bring those young people into your facilities. Show them what manufacturing is today. And all of you young students that are looking at manufacturing and engineering as a career, thank you. I think you're going to really enjoy it. So with that, have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you.